Sprout. I don't know about this. But you said you want Daddy to be happy. Yeah. But we're forgetting somebody very important. Who? Mom. Mom? What do you mean? Well, maybe Mom wouldn't be so happy about Dad going out on dates. Wow. I never thought of that. I don't want Mom to be not happy. And I don't want Daddy to be not happy. And I don't want us to be not happy. This is so complicated. I think I'm having my first headache. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, DJ. Okay. <laughs> Did you catch the ring? Did I catch the ring? Well, it looked like I caught the ring. Do you know how to turn this off? Another stupid question. Well, give me something to catch the water in. Got it. Here. Great, it's working. But it's filling up fast. Give me something bigger. Got it. This is worth more than two fifty an hour. <laughs> Give me a big bowl. It's full of popcorn. <laughs> Somebody just throw it away. <laughs> Bummer, take it off right now. Hey, DJ, be cool. No, look, she's stretching it out. You don't have to yell at me. I've got ears. But you got nothing between them, you old chicken wing. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, if I'm a chicken wing, then you're a double decker lame white chicken sandwich. <laughs> Come on, you're lucky to have a sister. Now say something nice about each other. Okay. Stephanie, you have a wonderful big sister. And DJ, you have an even more wonderful little sister. <laughs> yes, I do. Her name's Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, Dorothy was right. There's no place like home. <laughs> Just because I tease duck face at school, Uncle Jesse is making me call him. Honey, you know it's wrong to hurt someone's feelings. I think your Uncle Jesse's handling this just right. Okay, I'll call Walter and tell him I'm sorry. Then I'll invite him over for some soup and quackers. <laughs> I kill myself. Stephanie. I'm sorry, I had to get it out of my system. All right, come on, Steph. It's time to call Walter and apologize. I can't talk. I lost my voice. <laughs> Oh, well, then we're just going to have to go over Walter's house and apologize in person. My voice is back. <laughs> it's a miracle. Hallelujah. All right, Steffo, trust me on this one. You'll feel good, Walter will feel good, and I'll feel good because I thought of the idea. <laughs> Hold on one second. Here you go. Walter, this is Stephanie Tanner. And I'm really sorry. Well, nice talking to you. Don't you think you should mention what you're sorry for? I'm sorry I quacked at you. And? And I called your duck face and threw little pieces of bread at you. <laughs> you threw pieces of bread at the kid? <laughs> Steph, he's not a real duck. <laughs> Tell him he's a very nice boy. Walter, you're a very nice boy. You're welcome. Anything else? Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Yes, there is. Good girl. Want to say hi to my Uncle Jesse? No, Stephanie. Here no, he is. No, stick up. Hi, Walter. How are you? <laughs> Stephanie. Oh, you have a snake. That's great. Stephanie! Walter, about this girlfriend thing. It's exciting, isn't it? I can't wait to tell the whole second grade that you're my girlfriend. Aw, <laughs> oh, man. I feel four feet tall. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait. You can't tell anyone I'm your girlfriend. Oh, I get it. So you want it to be a secret? Uh, yeah. Top secret. Ooh. A secret girlfriend. 
What does that mean? <laughs> well, it means we'll never talk to each other. We'll never look at each other. We'll never hold hands. We'll be total strangers. Okay, but you're still my Shh. secret girlfriend. <laughs> well, I guess I won't talk to you later. <laughs> you know what I'm doing now? I'm afraid to ask. I'm giving you a secret kiss in my mind. <laughs> Here's someone who knows what the heck happened. I was taking a make-believe drive through the country, and I wanted to play the radio. So I turned the key, and the next thing I knew, I was in the kitchen. I should have never left those keys in the ignition. It's not your fault, Joey. I had no business being in your new car. It was perfect. Well, almost. The radio didn't work. Now he tells me. <laughs> Go ahead, Dad. Yell, scream, punish me. Or if you want, I'll just move to Mexico. <laughs> right now, I want you just to wait upstairs in your room until I can figure out what to do with you. Come on, Steph. Here, Deej. Take your sister upstairs. Make sure she doesn't skip the country. Stephanie, I am very disappointed in you. How could you do this? You could have been hurt. You could have hurt someone else. What you did today is the stupidest thing you've ever done. I know. That's why I ran away. And you know better than that, too, don't you? I know. Everything I do is wrong. I hate myself. Steph, come out from under there. I don't deserve fresh air. <laughs> How long do you intend to stay under that blanket? Until I get married. You know, it could be very difficult to meet somebody under there. I'll just stay in my room the rest of my life. Well, I don't know about that. But I do know that I am going to have to punish you big time. And I should never get any allowance or presents ever again. And you should send me away to carpenter school so I can build you a brand new house that you can live in without me. And you'd never have to hug or kiss me again. Steph, there is nothing you could ever do that would make me stop hugging and kissing you. Nothing? Come here. Look, you have to know that no matter what you do wrong, and no matter how angry I get, I am always going to forgive you because I love you. How can you still love me? I wrecked Joey's car and I broke the house. Steph, those are just things. We can always buy a new car or we can put up a new wall. But there's only one Stephanie Judith Tanner. <laughs> and you could never be replaced. Gee, I never thought of that. I think about it every day. Steph, what are you doing? Punishing myself. I'm sorry, Toys. I don't deserve to play with you anymore. Here, take Emily. Goodbye, fun. Honey, you don't have to do this. Yes, I do. I'm too dumb to have toys. And I don't deserve pillows or blankets or sheets, too. Steph, you don't want to sleep on your mattress. You'll wake up with those little button marks all over your back. <laughs> <laughs> Look.
Look, you know, Uncle Jesse knows you didn't do it on purpose. So, honey, there's no reason for you to feel bad. Come on. Let's go have breakfast. I can't leave the room. I grounded myself till I'm 82. You are not grounded. I am your father, and I am ordering you to play with your toys. Here. Daddy, please don't make me have fun. I'm sorry, honey, but someday when you're a parent, you'll understand. Now, come on. Have fun. <laughs> Dog. Hey, babe. Hi. You can come a little closer. I better not. I'm dangerous. That's why you hate me. Stephanie Judith Tanner, I do not hate you. Then why are you yelling and being so grouchy and telling Daddy to slam doors? Well, because I'm frustrated. You know what? What? I've been feeling sorry for myself. And I've been acting like a baby. Uh, I didn't mean to blame you. I'm very sorry. You mean you're really not mad at me? No, I'm not. Stephanie made one little mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, look at me. I'm an expert bike rider, right? I've never had one problem. I miss one little sign, boom, I'm the mummy man. <laughs> Same deal with you. I mean, how many pretend haircuts have you given? Counting yours. Million. See, you're an expert too, but you made one little mistake. Stephanie, I promise I'm gonna be as good as new, okay? Okay. All right, now you get over here and you give me the world's biggest hug. Lay it on me, baby. <laughs> what, do I have the cooties or something? <laughs> Come here, sit on my lap. Easy. Go ahead. There you go. All right, now, I'm going to need your help. What do you mean? Well, since I can't play my music, I was thinking on working on some lyrics. That is, if you could write them down for me. I could do that if you write about dog, cat, tree, and Stephanie. <laughs> Can you spell baby? B-A-B-Y. Good, then we have a hit. Stephanie? Steph, would you just stop and talk to me? There's nothing to talk about. I don't have a mother, and there's nothing you guys can say to change that, right? See? I'll never eat another cheesy yum-yum as long as I live. I want my bed back. Steph, you're supposed to be gone tonight. It was a stupid party with stupid people and stupid mother-daughter makeovers. Uh, Kimmy, can I have a word with Steph alone? I'm out of here. Steph? Just forget it. Hey, Dad, can I have a minute alone with my sister? Sure, Deej. I'll be downstairs. I'm sorry I had such a bad time tonight. I know exactly how you feel. No, you don't. When you were eight, you got to go to the honeybee slumber party with mom. But that doesn't mean I don't miss her just as much as you do. It's not fair. All those girls with their moms tonight were so happy. Why couldn't I be happy too? Seth, it's okay. You know, sometimes I look at other girls with their moms and feel the same way. How do you make the feeling go away? It's hard. But something that helps me is, well, I think of the things that we do have that other people don't have. Like what? Well, we have three people that love us a lot. We're the only ones with a dad and Uncle Jesse and a Joey. And we have something else too. We do? have each other. Hey, Dad, you thought it over. Can I do it? Please, please, please. Guys, tell him to let me do it. Oh, come on, Danny. What's the big deal? Let her do it. Do what? <laughs> Steph's teacher thinks she might have a career as a professional dancer. 
There's only one thing stopping me from being the happiest I've been in my whole life. Of all people. Comet, I have a life. I have friends, who I never see anymore. And I have my family, who I never see anymore. But I have eight hours free every night. Of course, that's when I'm sleeping. <laughs> who am I kidding? I have no life. <laughs> You're right, Comet. I'm gonna tell Dad I quit. You lied to me and you deliberately disobeyed me. I told you you could get your ears pierced when you got to junior high like DJ. Why do I have to do everything like DJ? When DJ did it, how DJ did it. I want to be treated like an individual. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a good point. It is? I mean, it is. <laughs> Steph, let me ask you a question. Why did you want pierced ears? All my friends have them. So you wanted to be an individual so you could be exactly like your friends? Well, no. I guess maybe. Honey, if your friends didn't have pierced ears, would you still want them? I don't know. Is this a trick question? Stephanie, if you want to be an individual, you have to know what you want. As you get older, you're going to have to make more and more tough decisions. And you can't, you can't base your decisions on what your friends are doing or what's popular or what's on TV. You have to know what works for you. How will I know? Well, you have to think about what's right. And then if you ever have any doubts, that's what I'm here for. I love you, Steph. I love you too, Dad. Come here. Here. Sit down here. Something you want to talk about? Yeah. I can't hear you unless you speak up. I can't. I promised I wouldn't tell. And you guys taught me never to break a promise. Yes, well, that's a, that's a good rule. But once in a while, there are exceptions to every rule. There are? Yeah. Yeah, like that one about, you know, not being able to swim after you eat. You know, you have to wait an hour. I hate that rule. I mean, I mean, sure, it applies. Say you eat a big steak dinner, right? You have a steak, you have a nice baked potato, some sour cream. Then, yes, an hour. But say you eat a cracker. See, this makes no sense. Here's where the exception comes in. You eat a cracker, I say, boom, five minutes, bada bing, you're in the pool, right? A peanut, I say, eat the peanut and swim. Who cares, right? There's all these, a whole plethora of exceptions here. Uncle Jesse, I don't think this is that kind of exception. Well, look, Steph, you're a very smart kid. Just use your common sense. If I tell you... Can we just keep it between us? Well, I, I can't promise that unless I know what the secret is. That's what I should have said. Okay, there's this kid in my class, Charles. His father hits him. Bad. He really hurts him, Uncle Jesse. Are you sure, Steph? Positive. He told me all about it. And he wasn't in school today. The teacher said he had another accident. Oh, I gotta report this right now. Why? Because if I don't, I'm gonna go straighten them out myself. No, Uncle Jesse, please. I swore I wouldn't tell. Listen, sweetheart. I know you want to keep your promise. But if you know this is happening and you don't say anything about it, you're only helping it happen again. But what'll happen to Charles if we report it? What'll happen to Charles if we don't? Yeah. Glad you're home. Listen, um, I want to talk to you about your pal Charles, okay? It's been a whole week and he's still not in school. I'm worried about him. I know. Listen, um, I made some calls today and the child welfare people, um, they took Charles and they put him in a foster family. They took him away from his home? I never should have told you. Now he's going to hate me. This is all your fault. Stephanie, knock it off. Stephanie, listen, it's not my fault. It's not your fault. We weren't the ones hurting Charles. Then why'd they have to take him out of his house? They had to. He wasn't safe there. What's going to happen to Charles? Well, Charles and his father need help, and now they're going to get it. Sweetheart, please believe me. You did the right thing. Then why do I feel so lousy? Because it's a lousy situation, kid. 
But listen, I realize how hard this was for you. But the bottom line is, thanks to you, thanks to Stephanie, Charles' father can't hurt him tonight. What made his father so mean? I don't know. I look at you girls, and I look at Nikki and Alex. How can anyone hurt their child? Dad just pulled in. It's time for dinner. Let's go eat. Okay, everybody, I got pizzas. Eat them while they're hot. Mm-mm-mm. Pass it around. Hey, Nick, you want some pizza? Is there any pepperoni? Oh, my God. Thanks. What was that for? Nothing. I just felt like it. I'll take a free hug anytime. Hey, Michelle. Hi. How are you doing? I feel like crying. Me too. But we can't do that in front of Uncle Jesse. Why not? Because if he saw us crying, he might start to cry again, too. Uncle Jesse was crying? He started to. He didn't want me to see, but I did. Michelle, we got to be brave for Uncle Jesse. And not let him know that we're sad, too. I don't know if I could do that. You have to. But how could I stop myself from crying? Just... Think of something funny, like uh, when Joey stuffs a whole donut in his mouth. Yeah, that always makes me laugh. Steph, get your coat. Jason's outside with his car. Cool, I got a need for speed. Just let me tell my dad I'm going out. Hey, Dad, can I go out with you? Did you do your homework? It's Saturday. Oh, well, uh, good, just be home by Trolls at 12 o'clock. Cool, curfew's at 12? No, no, no. Troll's at 12. You'll be home by 9. Okay. See you, Dad. Bye. Come on. Come on. That was almost too easy. Steph, are you sure you want to do this? Let me think about it. Thinking? Thinking? I'm out of here. <laughs> Steph, you're not going. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. I can't let you go. Gia, tell the guys to hang. I'll be right out. I thought you said your sister was cool. She used to be. Deej, forget it. There's no way you can make me stay. I'll tell Dad. OK, there's one way. <laughs> I can't believe you'd squeal on me. I can't believe you'd put me in this position. What about all those times that you snuck in after curfew and I never said a word? That's different. This is dangerous. Steph, are you coming or what? Yeah, I'm coming. No, you're not. You're bluffing. I'm telling. I'm going. Steph, I'm serious. Dad? Yeah, Deej? Gia, better go without me. Never mind. Sorry, Steph. I hope you're happy. From now on, just stay out of my life. Steph, we need to talk about this. There's nothing to talk about. You just hate to see me have fun. Oh, yeah, Steph, that's real bright. Yeah, the first thing on my mind when I wake up is, how can I make Steph miserable today? So you admit it. <laughs> oh, you're losing it. No, did you just, just you don't understand. I want to have you some can't fun. just get it. I was just, with somebody uh, Guys, you guys, guys, take it easy. Whatever this is about, it can wait, OK? Um, Steph, I just got off the phone with Gia's mom. She was in a car accident tonight. No. Yeah. Is she OK? Well, she got some bumps and some bruises, and she's going to be in the hospital overnight. Oh, my god. She was with two other guys, and uh, one of them broke his leg and got cut up pretty badly. They were really lucky they were wearing their seat belts. The car was totaled. I can't believe it. Didn't you say something about going out with Gia tonight? Well. Um, yeah, but... But when Gia showed up with those guys, Steph decided not to go. Really? Steph, that showed incredibly good judgment. You have any idea how proud of you I am right now, honey? Probably too proud. Oh, never. Yeah, Gia's mom said she wanted her to take it easy. You can call her tomorrow, okay? Okay. Okay. 
Good night, sweetie. Good night, Daddy. Good night. Good night. Good night. I could have been in that car. Yeah, but you weren't. Because of you. I mean, I knew it was dangerous, but I wanted to go anyway. I am so stupid. No, you just think that nothing bad could ever happen to you. Did you ever think like that? Nobody knows this, but one Halloween when I was 13, I told Dad I was sleeping at Kimmy's, and she told her mom that she was sleeping here. We thought it'd be great to stay out all night. Was it? Well, I thought so at the time. I mean, we were all over the city. We even hitchhiked up to Berkeley. You hitchhiked? What are you, nuts? That's so dangerous. Well, I know that now, but back then I was young and stupid like you. So how do you get to be old and smart? Well, after a while you just get this little voice inside that tells you when something's dangerous. And if you're lucky, you learn to listen to it. I think I heard that voice before I got in the car with those guys. It sounded a lot like Dad. Yeah, well, as you get older, it starts to sound a lot more like you. I'm glad you were there for me tonight, Deej. And listen, I'm sorry about what I said. You're still pretty cool. Thank you.